Don't go out and spend 10K on a mobile EV charger when you can do it the right way. Better parts, lower price, better finished product. Let's get into it. I've got $3,500 in hard parts in this unit. What we're gonna do is we're gonna break down all the parts, what they cost, how we put it together, and how these things operate. This is actually where we built this unit. I was trying to build this as simply as possible, so we built this in the parking garage of my condo on the tailgate of this actual F-150 pickup truck with nothing more than simple hand tools, and the only thing missing over there is the drill. So it was me, a neighbor of mine who was an electrical engineer who assisted me with this whole breaker issue, and believe it or not, probably the finest car cardiac anesthesiologist in the entire Midwest was part of this build. So there were two professionals and one knucklehead on this build and we got it done. It is that simple. This does not take a lot of brain power. Now, before we get started, all the parts and what we paid for them are listed in the description down below. So starting with the hard parts. The first thing you're gonna need is a 12,000 running watt generator. I chose the Westinghouse. When I was looking at generators, I was looking for a couple of specifications. The most important one was total harmonic distortion. And this one runs under 5%. Everything else was higher than that, so that was a really important number to me. The second thing I was looking for was one that was relatively quiet. Of everything I looked at, the Westinghouse was the quietest. The Westinghouse is also among one of the heaviest. So once you have it mounted in the vehicle, it can stay in there. It's not gonna be a big deal if you're taking it in and out. It's like picking up an engine block. They are by no means light. We ordered the W Gen 12,000 off Amazon of all places, and I got a 12,000 C, so they gave me about a four or $500 more expensive generator, so I'm not gonna complain about that. So let's talk wall units. What you're gonna need is something that has the Tesla North American Charging Standard plug, the NACS plug. As of right now, the Tesla wall unit was the only one that had this. There are a couple others that are coming to market, but as of right now, the Tesla's the only one available, so I bought this. And if the others would have been available, I still would have bought the Tesla because the Tesla has by far the best customer service. I had to do some updates on this. They were phenomenal in the customer service. Their response, very short hold times. They were very easy to work with. This unit happens to also have the J1772 adapter here in the side of the housing. I got to start the generator up to get it out to show you. We don't want to go through all that, but you simply plug the cord into the side of the housing, push the release on the 1772 adapter, the entire thing comes out, and then you can charge a J1772 equipped vehicle. So regardless of the wall unit you select, what you want is something that has an NACS plug on it. The reason why you're gonna want a wall unit that has an NACS plug on it is because in 2024 and 2025, most OEMs are going over to the NACS port in their vehicle. So Tesla's charging port will actually become native in the vehicle. So going forward, you're gonna see that charging standard more often. And it's easier to adapt into what it will become the inferior charging standard with the adapter in the side of the unit. This was done to essentially future-proof this entire thing and not have to go back and change this just to get the NACS plug. As I said, Within the next couple of months, there will be two or three more manufacturers that will release it. You'll have more options. I just like Tesla. And then the final piece of the puzzle to marry these two components is you simply need a six gauge cord that has a NEMA 1450 on it. That's it. That's all you need right now to start charging EVs with this mobile EV charger. Just gotta put it together, plug it in, and it will run and it will charge cars. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you what we did to get the most performance out of this unit where we can actually get 20% more current and instead of charging at 40 amps, we can charge at 48 amps. First thing you're gonna do is figure out a way to mount the wall unit to the generator, especially if you're going to hardwire it like we did. You don't wanna be dragging the generator around and then pulling the wall connector around behind it and plugging it. Just mount it to the generator, it's all one unit. They never get split up and nothing ever gets lost. So what we did actually sounds kind of silly. I went to a buddy of mine's house, showed him what I was trying to do, and he's like, I've got something for you. And the solution is a metal shelf. You look at this metal shelf, all we did was we bent this over to 90, laid it back, bent this over to 90. And if you look, you can see this relief right here is this relief right here. That shelf is simply bolted to the generator. Two screws here, three screws across the top, and it makes for a pretty rigid mounting solution. So the mounting solution doesn't have to be really elaborate. Just make sure it works and make sure it's rigid. Now I'm gonna show you how to hardwire it and how we tweaked another 20% of performance out of this EV charger. So you wanna go into the unit and this was a four wire 1450 plug. The neutral does not get used. So we just coiled it up, and left it aside and then wire the, the green, red, black as Tesla dictates, that's, a, that's what it looks like and their wiring instructions. And then again, from there, if you just wanna come around and plug it into 1450, you can do that. But we're gonna get into why we have the front of this panel off and show you how we did it 
to increase some performance on this particular EV charger. So come here, I'll show you how we did this. So you see those vent holes down there. All we did was we took a step bit, ran a step bit down through those holes and opened them up so you could then put that strain relief in. Brought the wires in from the wall connector. Again, down here on the left-hand side where you see the neutral. Again, we just coiled up the neutral. It's not being used, put it aside. And then we ran over here to the right side, over to the breaker. And what we did on this unit to tweak a little bit more performance out of it was we installed a 60 amp breaker so we could run the wall connector at 48 amps. The unit comes with a 50 amp breaker, but we wanted to stay in that 80% continuous load, load rating for the breaker. So we upgraded the breaker to a 60. And then if you look here, we've got our ground coming out of our loom right here, the green wire, it's, it's grounded to the chassis here. And then we have our red leg coming in here. So this is the output side of the breaker down here at the bottom. This is our red, this is our red leg and our black leg. And you can see that they're, they're paired up on the outgoing red legs and black legs of the breaker. Incoming power comes in at the top side, throw the breaker, turn it on, delivers power to the bottom side, energizes the wall unit. Okay, so just to reiterate, if you are going to go the 48 amp route, you're going to need a 60 amp breaker. This 60 amp breaker I bought from Granger was like $35 or something. While I was buying that from Granger, I got these crimp connectors that were really nice. They go on a quarter 20 bolt, which is what you have there. You got one, two, three. I bought a thing of a dozen of them. They're like 12 bucks, I don't know. We'll link everything down below. Other thing is the screws that come out of the, the factory breaker will not go in this breaker. I will link down below what these are. You'll need to find those as well. But if you are going to simply just plug in the 1450 cord to the front of the panel, using the 50 amp receptacle on the front of the panel, you need to know this. You can only run the wall connector at 40 amps. You do not want to exceed that 80% continuous load. So if you wish to go 48 amps on the wall connector, you cannot come through the 50 amp receptacle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna load it up in the pickup truck, we're gonna strap it down, and we're gonna go out and charge some cars with it. Let's go. Okay, so it's like uh, 24, 25 degrees in St. Louis. We're gonna charge up a couple cars. We're gonna do a cold start on the uh, generator. It's been in the back of the pickup truck well, for like a month now, and it's been outside all day. So we're gonna do a cold start on it. We're gonna charge up the Rivian, show it charges, show what's coming out of the uh, charger in the name of kilowatts, show what's going in the Rivian. But we're gonna get this thing started, warm it up, and then we're gonna close this door because it is cold outside. So let's roll. So while the mobile EV charger is warming up, I'll tell you what we're going to do. We're going to get it hot and then we're going to plug into the Rivian, show you what kind of charge rate it's getting off the mobile EV charger. When we're done with that, we're going to go over to the Rivian wall connector. That's on a 60 amp circuit. We're going to plug it in there and then we're going to compare on the Rivian app what the vehicle is bringing in on the wall connector versus what is bringing in on the mobile EV charger. Stay tuned. Okay, so now what we're going to do is I'm going to show you what we're getting out of the mobile EV charger in the name of kilowatts versus what the car is taking in. So on this side is the app for the Tesla wall unit. You can see that it's putting out 11.2 kilowatts, it's about 46 amps. Over here on the left hand side is the app for the Rivian and it is taking in 10.5 kilowatts and it's charging at about 23 miles per hour. So we have the mobile EV charger commissioned for 48 amps and it's running about 46. So it's running up there where it should. And we have the car bringing in 10 and a half. So it's putting out about 46 amps. The car is only calling for 10.5 kilowatts, which is probably 40, 42 amps. So it's doing what it's supposed to be doing out there. It's doing exactly what we built it for. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna plug in the Rivian wall connector to the Rivian. We're gonna compare charging performance in kilowatts versus what we had on the mobile EV charger. Okay, so we have the Rivian app up for the R1S and connected to the wall connector, it is bringing in 10.7 kilowatts and it's charging at 22 miles per hour. So the performance of the mobile EV charger is almost identical to Rivian's wall connector wired on a 60 amp service. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna hook it up to the Audi Q8 e-tron and we're gonna compare again. Let's go! Okay, mobile EV charger plugged in, car's charging. On this side, we have the mobile EV charger with the Tesla wall connector. You can see it's running at 11.2 kilowatts. It's indicating it's getting that sweet juice by that line running down in the car. On this side, 
we have the Audi app. You can see we are charging, the car is receiving 10.6 kilowatts. It's charging at 0.5 miles per minute, which translates into 30 miles per hour. So all that being said, the Mobile EV charger is performing exactly as we designed it. What we're gonna do now, we're going to disconnect the Mobile EV charger from the Audi, and we are going to plug the Audi into the wall connector, and we are going to compare performance in kilowatts. Wall connector is in and we have the app up here and you can see we are bringing in 10.4 kilowatts. So the performance is similar there. And again, we are charging at 0.4 miles per minute. So that's what, 25 miles per hour, maybe something like that, 24, 25 miles per hour. So the finest mobile EV charger ever made by two professional guys, one knucklehead, is performing exactly as we built it. We built it to run at 48 amps, we built it to charge hot, and on a Rivian and an Audi, it performs as well as Rivian's wall connector on a 60 amp circuit. So I am personally pleased at what we've done with a minimal amount of money. I think we're $3,500, $3,600 in this thing. Again, in the description, we will have the entire breakdown of what we have for parts, what we have in the unit, and give you a firm dollar amount down to the penny of what I have in this unit. But I am extremely pleased in what we've done. Again, this started out as building an affordable, but very well built mobile EV charger and not spending $10,000. And I think we have more than succeeded.